Welcome to Loving Life Hitched Up. Today is the saddest day in the life of a northern RVer. Today we winterize. We're going to go through the winterizing process for a Tab uh, 400 2020 version. I'm going to give you a few options, choices, and show you the way that we're choosing to winterize our Tab 400. First step, no matter which process you use, is always going to be the same thing. You have to make sure that your freshwater tank is empty. Under the driver's side of the trailer, tucked way down under here, you'll see a uh, valve and that valve says fresh water. Turn it so that the valve is in line and you'll see if there's water in there, the water will start to come out. That tank has to be empty in order for the winterization process to work. So after your fresh water tank is done draining, um, you have to go ahead and close that valve underneath. Now that's closed, we're gonna go to the next step, which is inside. So step two in the process for winterization of the Tab 400 is coming inside, turning on your water pump. Then you have to open up and pump out all the water that's in the system, hot and cold, until all you get is air. This process has to take place in all of your fixtures, your outdoor shower, if you have one, Tab 4 does, your bathroom sink and your shower and your toilet. You have to pump all that water out of all those lines. Yeah, we're good. So after making sure you get all the water out of those lines, utilizing the pump, be sure to turn your pump off. You do not want to burn your pump out because you have no water in your tank and you've now gotten the water out of the line, so you want to kick that uh, water pump off. So the next thing that we need to do uh, after making sure that those are all done is draining our low point drains. Our low point drains are these, the blue and the red valves right here. Let's show them right there. Those are your low point drains. You want to do one at a time, one valve at a time. Just turn the, the valve in line, meaning in line with the pipe. And you'll see water coming out underneath. But once that's done, reclose that valve and then open the next. So after the water is done dripping out of that, go ahead and close that valve. Now, you look here in the farther back, there are two more valves. You see them at the little yellow uh, handles right there. Those are the Aldi. And again, doesn't matter which, which one you do first, but you're only gonna do one at a time. These are pressure relief valves to drain the Aldi tank and the hot water tank and the Aldi return. So one at a time. There's almost nothing coming out of that one. See nothing? That's good. And let's do the next. That one has a little more. So we'll let that drain before we move on. After the water finishes draining out of the, the uh, pressure valves, go ahead and close that pressure valve off. And here's where it can go in many different directions. Um, flushing the toilet would be next. We've already flushed the toilet and we're gonna be putting some um, antifreeze type stuff in the toilet for the uh, actual flange as need be. So next step in the process would be switching here, putting your hot water heater bypass valve into the bypass. You wanna put it in this. Now the Aldi system can still work so you can still heat the trailer, but you won't be able to make hot water and this keeps you from getting any antifreeze 
or anything like that into the actual heat element of the Aldi and the hot water exchanger, the, the, the valve that's in there because that is not recommended. It, it will uh, ruin or destroy that. So you wanna make sure you're in that bypass mode. Many different ways that you can winterize. There is uh, basically three. Uh, we are going to blow out the lines, meaning we're gonna hook up an air compressor and we're gonna use a adapter here that I have, which will allow me to hook up to my uh, city water connection. So this will allow me to push air in. I'm gonna push air into the system and then open each of the valves inside on the apparatus, the sinks and so on, till the air comes out. That gets the remainder of the air out of the system. Very, very important. Just like your city water connection can't be over 50 PSI for water pressure, air pressure is the same animal. I have it set at about 40, just under 45, because I don't want to, you know, overpressurize. Not sure exactly how accurate the gauge is. So I'm about 40, 45. That's going to allow me to push the air, the water, using air pressure to push all the extra water out. And some folks will tell you that that basically is enough for winterization. Um, with other two steps that we're going to do after that and then the other option that you could do when winterizing is you can use antifreeze uh, use a, a non-toxic antifreeze the pink stuff as most people refer to it you can go ahead and pour four to five gallons worth of antifreeze into your fresh water tank once you get those into your fresh water tank you would go inside activate your water pump and you would draw up that antifreeze from your fresh water tank into all of your water lines and you would go from sink to sink to bathroom to toilet and you would turn those on until the pink stuff came out thus filling those lines full of antifreeze keeping it from freezing now an option that you have we're going to show you inside will be another way that you can do that if you want to use antifreeze um, which is going to save you in a amount that you would need. So I'm going to attach this air pressure. This is a valve. It allows the air hose to clip on in a quick connect and it is set up to attach to the fresh water fill or the city water connection. So what that does is gives me an opportunity where I can power or charge the system with air pressure. Now that is charging up. We can start right here at the shower because it's right by us. Open the valve. So the air pressure is filling the lines and that's going to push any additional water out of the system. Now, like I said, it's very important to remember to stay under that, under that 50 pound pressure limit so that you don't stress your uh, PEX connection. You gotta make sure you do both hot and cold. And just when you thought all the water was out, mostly all air. Now is there still going to be little bits of water left in the uh, lines? It's possible. But in order for it to freeze solid and break the connections, it has to be the diameter of the, the, the uh, pipe. The next step in the process is draining your uh, black and gray tanks. Now the black tank is empty. Black tank has been empty uh, prior to this process. I dumped that out at the um, dump station last time we were there. The only amount of water that is in there was from the two little uh, flushes, but that is enough, not enough water to create an issue in the black tank. Uh, and the gray tank is going to have the water that was in the water lines that was pushed out by the air pressure and by the pump. So we need to drain out the gray tank. 
and that is accomplished like traditional. Um, there is nothing in there. We use a biodegradable soap and there is nothing in there but a little bit of water from what we just pumped out from before. So we're going to go ahead and just drain out that little bit of water that's in there. Shouldn't be very much. And all that is is the water that was in the water line uh, from being pumped out before because the gray tank was empty when we got here. You can either fill your freshwater tank from the outside with four or five gallons of uh, non-toxic antifreeze pink stuff, as I said, or you have a second option in the tab 400. If you do not have the large fridge like we do not, we have the small fridge, which gives us a large closet. And at the bottom of the large closet is your access point for your water pump, which is this right here. Now, if you do have the fridge on this side, there's this section down here underneath would be a panel that you'd have to remove a couple of screws, get that out of the way to give you the same access to the same area. Now, don't be all freaked out about all the stuff that's in here. You're really, really gonna be messing with one thing and one thing only in here. And that is how the, the water pump works. So now there's two sides to a water pump, the uh, in, intake, and the out. Now, how do you tell the one from the other? Well, you follow one side down, it goes down into the ground here or down into the bottom. And that is gonna be where your water tank is under your unit, your fresh water tank. And that's where it's stored. And this is how it draws in. If you look on the other side here, this breaks off into multiple locations. Some going this way, some going this way. So the side that has more pipes coming out is always gonna be the out. The side that only has one is gonna be the in. One main storage area, multiple directions going into your bathroom and your heat in the back. So what you can do, there's two methods. I, I have from my um, manufacturer, from my uh, salesperson at uh, Miller Trailer Sales, they gave me this, or sold me this hookup, which allows me to remove this connection right here, attach this and the open end of this tube goes right inside the gallon of antifreeze, allowing me to draw directly from the gallon of antifreeze as opposed to having to fill up my whole tank. So this would be attached right here in place of this spot, and this would go into the gallon. Now, if you're using antifreeze, just put it into the gallon. Some folks choose to use vodka. And now vodka, there's uh, you know, it doesn't freeze unless it's 16 degrees below zero. We don't get that kind of cold uh, where we are, so that's not a concern. You could either stick this into the container of vodka, or pour it into a a bucket or uh, you know, a container, and then draw it up. So you would feed that in, turn on your water pump like normal, and then go from sink to to bathroom and make sure that you draw up that fluid to each of those pieces of uh, you know, your fixtures, your shower, your toilet, and you would leave that in the container until you start pumping out pink or vodka coming out in place of water. And when you're all done, this gets put back together. Now, what that does in the end, means the end of next season, you're going to have to flush and clean all that stuff out. So I don't want to fill the whole water system full of antifreeze or vodka. I opted to go with the air pressure, pushing that air through, getting the bulk or almost all of the water out. There's still gonna be a little bit left, but not enough to freeze to where it would expand and damage the uh, plumbing or the fixtures. Uh, there's not enough air left in there to create that problem. I don't wanna to have to flush everything out, worry about getting that you know, antifreeze out of there and or the vodka, though I would not be as worried about the vodka because it is obviously consumable. Um, but one less thing they have to do when it comes time to take the, uh, the trailer out of winterization. So being as that we are not gonna fill the entire system, we still have to worry about a couple of areas that are concerned. So one of those areas being the P-trap or the drain for the sink. So down here, the drain where your uh, fluids go in. So that section of plumbing will always have water in it as it's designed uh, to keep gases and things to come back through. So that stays full of water. So we are going to pour, or my lovely assistant here, is going to be pouring in about half, about half of that bottle down the drain here so that it fills the uh, P-trap. May I lift this? 
you may lift that out of the way and go ahead and just pour that in. And the, like I said, the vodka will not freeze um, unless we go 16 below. So this is going to fill up the plumbing as it comes down and goes around that fixture. That'll remain in that area and that'll keep that from um, freezing solid and damaging that part of the plumbing. Now, you don't have to buy Grey Goose, obviously, for this process, but you want to make sure that your vodka is uh, at least 80 proof, meaning 40% alcohol, um, so you don't have an issue. Here's my lovely assistant again. And <laughs> we're going to be just pouring for breakfast anymore. into this drain as well. Sacrilegious. I've never poured vodka down a drain before. Well, he's not this kind of drain. You also have to put some in the shower drain in the floor. Same thing because there is a trap down there and you want to make sure that that does not uh, freeze up as well. Coming to the end. So do a little research, check into things, figure out which way that you want to winterize your tab. Just make sure you do so that you don't end up with a plumbing problem, broken line, things of that nature. And if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you've not subscribed already. Make sure you hit that bell icon uh, so you get a notification when our next video is ready. And remember, when you're out there loving life, do it hitched up.